thanking God for uh, our lesson today, lesson 204. Uh, as we enter into this new year of 2018, we certainly thank God for all of his blessings as uh, has been so stated in, in that prayer. And um, uh, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, this is probably going to be the final year of uh, Mary's Gospel. We'll, we'll probably finish it by the end of the year. We'll be done. And probably right around um, Christmas or maybe this time next year we'll be starting the, um, the Old Testament. <coughs> but it's just good to know that um, uh, good, morning. Good, morning. good morning. Good morning. It's, it's good to know that uh, it's cold out there, ain't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Penny has the, the little ones in the other room, so y'all can go ahead on in there. How y'all doing? Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. So, um, our lesson today will be dealing uh, with something that I think uh, is very really interesting. The subject is called the children. And um, I think it's important that uh, as we uh, open up uh, our new year, uh, that we see how Jesus focuses on our aspect and, and, uh, of, of uh, our development, our growth, which is what we're here for. I mean, one of the things that you think about with children is that your main concern is that they grow and develop healthy Amen. to the best of their ability. Well, that's why the Lord describes us as children, because his, his main focus for us is that we grow and develop spiritually. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, we see ourselves even as, well, as natural grown folks, you know, we think, well, you know, I, I don't know, and then we gain so much um, familiarity with scripture and with things of the word. Um, but we should never get to a point to where we feel that we have reached adulthood in the things of God. We Amen. should always be uh, at, a, at a, I still need more growth and more development. Amen. So I think we should keep that in mind. Um, I think uh, it's one of the things that the Lord points out quite often, uh, especially to his disciples. Uh, that they should continue to develop and grow uh, in the Word of God. All right, so let's take a listen to our, our first story here, story 204, uh, The Children. Uh, this story is paralleled in, in Matthew 19, 13 through 15, uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 13 through 16, and also in Luke chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. So we see three of our gospel writers uh, deal with this particular topic. Take a listen. Story 204, The Children. Then they were bringing some children, even their babies, to him, so that he might touch them, lay his hands on them, and pray. And when the disciples saw it, they began rebuking those who brought them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and called for them, saying to them, let the children alone. Permit the children to come to me, and do not hinder them from coming to me, for the kingdom of the God of heaven belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will not enter into it at all. And taking them in his arms, he was blessing them, and putting his hands on them, he departed from there. All right. So we see this, uh, this story, very familiar story, um, as I stated, it has been uh, brought out in uh, three of our four gospel writers. And uh, we talked about how Jesus is traveling, he's going about, uh, he's going from town to town, he's, he's bringing stories of, of uh, spiritual insight through parables and teaching. But one of the things that Jesus also does is he also... Um, links a teaching to an action that people do. So when somebody does something, he says, okay, this is a time for me to explain to you what this actually means. Not just how you see it, but how it is in the spiritual, how it is in the eternal realm. And so when we see this story here, we see that there's something that's just going on, that's happening. It says, then they began to bring uh, some children, even babies. Now, why would they be doing this? Well, because already they're seeing the effect of Jesus 
when he is around people that have issues, that have problems. Blind folks, crippled folks, people with withered hands, people with withered legs, people with other demon possessed. And being in the midst of Jesus produces wellness for these individuals. And, 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 and an increase in either mental or spiritual or, 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 or physical abilities. The blind get their sight. The dumb begin to speak. The crippled begin to walk. So now they're looking at this and say, well, what else uh, could this man do? And you would almost can, can put two and two together. They're saying, well, I want to bring my child. You know, somebody might be saying, well, I don't have anybody that's, that, that I know of that, that's crippled. Or, well, what do I have that still has a need? Children. And so they begin to bring their children to Jesus, which is very fitting, which is what we should keep in mind, that we should always be presenting Jesus to our children. Amen. And everything that we do, we should be making sure that they see Christ in what uh, we do as, as parents and as adults. Uh, our children should see how we trust in the Lord, how we, how we lean upon the Lord. Uh, we should con constantly be bringing our children before the Lord. All right? And so uh, uh, it says they bring, these, they bring some children, even some of their babes, to him so that he might touch them and lay his hands on them and pray. And when his disciples saw it. So now the individuals are doing this. The disciples look at it, and all of a sudden, they began to what? Rebuke the people. You're bringing these kids over here? You're bringing all this? You know, because you look at the motivation as to why they would, would rebuke it. The Bible doesn't actually say, but then you put two and two together. What is it that they're, they're saying? Well, this isn't child's play. You know, people get like that. Well, this isn't something for children. This is for people that are, are well-rounded. Keeping in mind, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are the, are the so-called learned religious people. They're the ones that went through all the, you know, all the theological classes and whatnot. Um, the disciples that Jesus picked were common folk, workers. They worked out in the fields, fishermen, tax collectors, so-called blue-collar workers. But now they done got some time with the Lord and they done got elevated. And they, they began to understand uh, deep and insightful things. And you oftentimes look at that and you go, well, these are really, wow, he's speaking like wonderful things. How many times have, have they said that when Jesus said something, they were like, wow. They were amazed. They were blown away by what he did or what he said. And look at this. This is not child's play stuff. This is real serious stuff. And that is true. It is real serious stuff. But it's real serious for what? Everybody. And for every situation. You don't isolate it. And so now the, the, the Pharisees that were once looking at the disciples saying, where did these unlearned and ignorant men, because they weren't learned folks, have all this wisdom and have all this knowledge because they have been with Jesus. right? So now here's the disciples basically doing what? The same thing. Why are you bringing these children to, to our Lord? They're not going to understand his great, wonderful, uh, deep teachings. Now, once again, it doesn't say what they were thinking when they brought the child, when they were rebuking the people for bringing the children. I'm just trying to give a flavor for what may have been going on. All right? But nevertheless, whatever the reasons were, uh, uh, those who brought them, but when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. Jesus found it highly offensive that you would stop parents from bringing children. Jesus got indignant. In other words, he was like, I, I will not accept that. That you're going to stop somebody, I don't care who it is, from coming to me. You think a child can't understand what I want to say to it? You think a baby don't, don't grasp the love of God? You think that that's a waste of time? Because you start talking about, well, well, Jesus loves you, God loves you, to a baby. Well, you're just wasting time. They don't know what you're talking about. But you're doing more than just talking. You're bringing forth a, a reality of, 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 of <laughs> I want to uh, 
I want to bring out an experiment, but I'm not. If I do that, I'm going to I'm going to mess up because Penny is the one that's going to do it. She's going to do this thing, but uh, without me actually bringing up or mentioning that experiment, because we had talked about this over the, uh, uh, over the weekend, and I think our kids are going to love it. But what you will see is the power of words, and um, sometimes you think that. You know, you saying something, well, the child don't understand. He don't speak uh, the language yet. He don't know how to talk. But that doesn't mean that the words that you actually say impact that child to a degree that we may not be able to totally comprehend yet because it's spiritual. See, and when we think about uh, in the beginning was the what? Word. There's more to that than we can ever really, I think, comprehend. There's so much more to that, and, uh, and when uh, uh, Penny brings out the little experiment that she's going to do with, uh, with Ariel and Xavier, um, uh, we'll, we'll get to see that, and, and, and it, it'll take, uh, I think it's a two-month ex two month experiment, and we're going to see the progression of it. We're just dealing with words, with something that is interesting, but let me stop talking because I'll be like Gabriel. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to steal her thunder. <clears throat> All right, and so, um, so Jesus was filled with indignation because they stopped them from bringing the children. And then he said, he said to them, let the children alone. Stop hindering them. We should not be what? A stumbling block. We shouldn't be a roadblock. Permit the children to come to me. What did Jesus say? Permit, Permit the, the children, children to come. come to me. Allow it to happen. Uh, for the kingdom of God of heaven belongs to such as these. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is made up of these. And what are these? They're people. They're human beings. They're realities of, of knowledge, of, of, of understanding. Uh, God, things, uh, of people that were created in the what? Image of God. Still. Uh, yet they may be young, they may be uh, uh, unlearned in, in our ways, but they're still spiritual uh, entities that God can use and bless. All right, and then he says, Truly I say unto you, whosoever does not receive the kingdom of God like uh, as uh, a little child will not enter into it what at all. Well, then we need to make sure we understand that. What in the world does that mean? Truly I say unto you, whosoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child. Well, how does a child receive stuff? As it is. As it is. Mm -hmm. They receive it by what? By just believing what you're saying to them. Mm -hmm. You tell a child, this is, you know, uh, we, 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 uh, this is aunt so-and-so. Well, guess what? That's aunt so-and-so. You tell a child, you know, this is... Um, Apple juice, well, then it's, guess what? They're going to say it's apple juice. They're going to repeat what you said. Mm -hmm. They're going to mimic the way you present it. Amen. Uh, and it's going to be the way you be. So when you, when a child is born, he's not born speaking one language. When you start talking and you talk in English, guess what that child's going to speak? English. The child's going to go pick up what you bring to it. Right? And so we got to uh, mimic God that way. Jesus is our example. So we need to follow him and begin to what? Mimic him. Do what he's doing. And before we know it, we recognize that we have what? Chains. Because after the child stops mimicking, he begins to do what? Putting it together. And then the thinking process is going. And now I don't have to mimic you. I don't have to wait for you to go cookie. I think I want a cookie. And I know how to go and say cookie. You know, Baba. I know how to do it now. So now the child's expressing his own, own what? Its own feelings. What it wants. It's not waiting for you to, to lead and guide it and tell it what to say. It's now learned how to express its own self in this natural realm. Same thing with us. We come into the things of God as a babe. Not knowing. But as we mature in the word, we begin to learn how to present and, and express ourselves in the spiritual realm to God. But don't get confused. In the spiritual reality, we still probably sound like, you know, Baba, mm -hmm. <laughs> Cookie, 
we, we, we're not, you know, and we're thinking we're saying all that wonderful stuff because, you know, we could put, you know, our Heavenly Father, which are, you know, you are uh, lust, wonderful magistrate. And, you know, we put all these wonderful words from our perspective. But from a spiritual perspective, we're still talking, you know, little, little toddler language. Because we don't get the realities yet. The Bible con uh, uh, constantly tells us that mm -hmm. we're limited. Seeing through a glass, what? Dark. Oh. We understand in part. We testify in part. So we're still limited in that aspect. So which means that we are like children when it comes down to a lot of spiritual things. And we need to have the revelation that the Lord gives us because there's certain things we don't comprehend as of yet. And it says, and taking them in his arms, he was blessing them and putting his hands on them, uh, he departed from them. Right? So Jesus continued to bless the children, uh, putting his hands on them, blessing them. Um, and that's all you want. Uh, is, is, can I have my child to have a, the, the understanding of who God is to where he can be touched by God? Amen. To where she can be touched by God. That's what we want. Mm -hmm. It's never too late. It's never also what? Too early. Yeah. You should always be presenting God to, to your child. Uh, and we as children of God should always be presenting ourselves to the Lord. Right? And so I think it's important uh, that we see that um, uh, the, the, in a nutshell statement that I would say is that <clears throat> your connection to the Lord is, does more for you than you can ever think of. Uh, similar to how just being around the things of God does more for your children than you can think of. You think that, well, they don't get it, they don't understand it. But being in that atmosphere does it. You know, it's like, I mean, you can, you can uh, uh, put someone in, a, in a, a bathtub, a child, and the child is in the bathtub. Don't know how to really wash up. But just being in the water itself produces its own what? Cleansing. Cleansing. Well, it's the same thing. Just being in the things of God produces its own connection to spiritual things. So why it's important to have your children around spiritual things, around spiritual people too. Now, there's a reverse side to that too. Because you, if you put, just like how you put this child in water, it can produce its own cleansing. Now there's a way of actually washing it, even cleaner, but it has a, just a self aspect to it. Same thing if you put your child in mud. Put your child, you take it, you, ever, you go, ever go to the beach? And you bring all your stuff to the beach, and the next thing you know, you come back, and it's like, for a little while, it's like sand everywhere. Amen. You got to get the sand out. You got you got to wash that because if you don't wash that sand off before you leave, when you put, happen to bring some of that sand in the house, it just between the toes and the toenails, you know, on your hands, on your bag, it's just there. So why? Because that's what you are around. You bring it with you. Mm -hmm. It connects to you. Right? And spiritual things will what connect and hook up to you because what that's what you are around, be it either good or bad. Amen. Right? And so, and that's why we should Amen. constantly be washing ourselves in the Word and cleansing ourselves through prayer. All right. And so, uh, even our children, that's why you have to watch where they go. Amen. You know, you have them go on to certain things, and then sometimes certain things you can't avoid, but you do what you pray over them. Amen. You, you, put, you put the God in you in them. You put Amen. your hand on them and pray for them and watch over them. And um, you'd be surprised what that actually does for them. Amen. All right. Any other comments or questions on that? All right. And uh, we've got some time here. We're going to go over to story number 205, the rich young ruler. Well, he's got all three of them, huh? He's rich, he's young, and he's ruler. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he's got to talk about. Story 205, The Rich Young Ruler. And as he was setting out on a journey, behold, a certain ruler ran to him and knelt before him and asked him, saying, Good teacher, what good thing will I do that I might inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? Why do you ask me about what is good? There is no one who is good except only one, God alone. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, 
You know the commandments. You will not commit murder. You will not commit adultery. You will not steal. You will not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother, and you will love your neighbor as yourself. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these things from my youth. What am I still lacking? And when Jesus heard these things, looking at him, he felt a love for him said to him, One thing you lack, if you wish to be complete, go, sell your possessions, as much as you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and take up the cross, and come follow me. But when the young man heard this word, his face fell. He became very sad, and he went away grieved, for he was very rich, one who owned much property. And Jesus saw him, that he was very sad, and looking around, said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, how difficult it will be for a rich man, those who are wealthy, to enter the kingdom of the God of heaven. And the disciples were astonished at his words. And Jesus again answered and said to them, Children, how difficult it is to those trusting in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And when the disciples heard this, they were even more astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? And looking on them, Jesus said to them, With men this is impossible, but not with God. For all things impossible with men are possible with God. All right. This is a really good story. Amen. Um, and it's it's good in a sense because it opens our our understanding to things that, from a spiritual standpoint, we might not know. Which is why we need revelation from Jesus. We need Jesus to explain to us the things of the Spirit that we would not get uh, from any other way of um, of trying to study or or gain knowledge. But uh, as I had stated, when you look at the situation here, uh, you see something that I think is very uh, interesting. And the fact that you have this, uh, this rich young ruler. Oftentimes we look at um, today, our society, what, do we, what is folks trying to do? Get right? rich. Trying to get rich. People want to get, they want, they want to have more money. Okay. So, but this guy, he already what? He he's, he's got it. All right. Now, what else do people try to do? How many different products do you sh do you see? Well, it says, well, if you use this, it'll make you younger. If you do this, it'll make you younger, make you feel younger. Right? So everybody's trying to capture and sustain their what? Their mm -hmm. youth. This guy already has it. He's what? He's young. So he has the riches while he's what? Young. Young. Then people are trying to get to. Uh, promotions and different things and, and, and have the ability to say well I, when I have when I say uh, build this building it gets built when I say to people uh, you know, come do this they'll come do that that's called what? Power. power well he had power because he was called a what? a ruler so, he, so wait a minute now, the, the man's got riches he's got power mm -hmm. and he's got youth why is he seeking Jesus? Don't he got it all? I thought he had it all. He doesn't. And that's the one thing that oftentimes, and, and people will say, you know, you get all that money and all that fame and all that popularity and all that, uh, you're not, it's not going to make you happy. And then people will respond, well, let me get it and see for myself. <laughs> yeah. But I think we can come to the conclusion that yes, everybody would like to be have uh, you know, a little well off, have a little you know, have yes, feel yeah. youthful and all that kind of stuff. But if you think that that's going to fulfill you and bring you ultimate happiness, this story is here to remind you it will not. No matter how much we think it will, you see people uh, that you know that that have a lot and. and Famous people that have millions, and, and they're out there, and they're 
you know, abusing drugs and alcohol and abusing themselves uh, because they have not been able to find that inner joy, that inner peace, mm -hmm. that inner satisfaction. But yet you see somebody that's struggling trying to make you know, ends meet, living from paycheck to paycheck, and they go on, and, and though they go through the days of, of ups and downs with their uh, searching circumstances, their inner person has joy and contentment and thankfulness when they get things and they're grateful, they have a grateful attitude. They just seem to have a little bit more of an upbeat atmosphere and attitude towards life. Well, why is that? Because you are not made of the things that you possess. Jesus talked about that rich, you know, that rich man that said he's going to build the bigger barns. Mm -hmm. right? And so, oftentimes we we get uh, uh, lied to by this world that tries to tell us that these are the things you should chase after. Chase after the money. Chase after trying to be as youthful as you can. Chase after trying to get as much power. Not to say that those things are bad in itself. There's nothing wrong with. You know, if you go to work, you want everybody. I don't. I don't want a promotion. I'm trying to stay godly. No, <laughs> no. We we gonna take the raise, right? Because we want the extra money. We need it, right? So I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is, you can't trust in that to bring you inner peace and inner joy. It'll bring joy for a what? For a moment. Because we've all at some point gotten some raises, right? But how long did that last? To the point where. I got a raise back in 1997. I don't need no more. Mm -hmm. No, no. no. <laughs> that's, that's, that's been 11 years ago. You, you need another raise, right? Mm -hmm. right? They, they keep raising the minimum wage. Why? Well, they raise minimum wage. You know? Everybody should be happy. Well, you know, they, they're going to continue to have to. And so what I'm saying by bringing all these little things that we all know is that that stuff doesn't bring ultimate joy. It doesn't bring ultimate happiness. Uh, the battle with youth. I don't care how you fight. You can go. You can. You see some people. who's like, oh, look at him. He's sixty. He don't look. He don't look a day over forty. Yeah, but you didn't say he didn't. He didn't look a day over twelve. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when a person is sixty and you say he don't look over forty, that's good. But you're still forty. Yeah. All right. But when you and somebody somebody yeah. say, well, he's seventy and he don't look a day over fifty. You see. Then you get up to like, ooh, he's 90. He don't look a day over 70. No matter how much you look good, good to, still you're, still, you're still moving up. Mm -hmm. You don't see that guy that's 80, ooh, he looks like he's 14. That don't really happen. So the youth, no matter how you try to hang on to it, you might not be slipping through as fast as others, but you're still what? Slipping through. Mm -hmm. And ruler. I mean, what does that say? produces responsibility. If you're ruling over somebody, then you also have the responsibility. Do you want it? And the more rulership you have, the more what? Responsibility. responsibility. And when things mess up, guess who they come into? You. They come into you. Right? When, when the, you, you own the company and the company was doing shady activity, who going to jail? You. Okay. Because what? That's your company. That's right. I didn't know. Well, you own it, you should have known. So all of these things bring a, an illusion of complete satisfaction that doesn't exist. Which is why this guy is still trying to what? Find contentment. He's seeking and, and looking and he has obviously heard about who? Jesus. Jesus. And so he said, well maybe this is it. I got the money, I got the youth, I got, I got the power. But I'm still not where I feel like I need to be. You're not content. And you will never be content until you find ultimate joy. And that comes through who? Knowing Jesus. So therefore, he's on, he's on the hunt still. Alright? And so, and it says, um, and he, and as he had uh, uh, settled uh, out on a journey, Jesus is going back out on another journey. Uh, behold, a certain ruler ran to him and knelt before him and asked him, saying, Good teacher. Now, let's pause there for a moment. Let's take a look at this. So, Jesus is traveling, and as he's traveling, this, this ruler runs up to Jesus because he heard about Jesus, obviously. And then he does what? He kneels he to him. To him. 
he humbles himself to Jesus and asks him saying good teacher oh so now he calls Jesus a what a good teacher, teacher. Mm -hmm. now there's two aspects to this I, and I think you can kind of pick either one is he really in a situation where he just feels so overwhelmed by his lack of, of contentment and what he has heard about Jesus that he just falls to him, humbles himself, calls him good teacher, bowing, bowing and kneeling to him. Or is he using his political savvy? Because political folks, they know how to say the nice things mm -hmm. and they walk up to him and go, oh, well, this is, you know, president so-and-so, he's a leader of this and this. And really, in their mind, they're saying, no, this, he, may be, he may have the title of president so-and-so, but he's really just somebody that I don't really uh, 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 like or I don't agree with or trying to use and manipulate. I'm, I'm over here in your country, not because I like you, but because your country's got minerals. So I don't really care about you, but you're the ruler of the country that's got the minerals. I really want the minerals. Amen. But, but since you're the president of the country, I got to come to you, tell you how wonderful I think you are or what a good job you're doing. But I'm really focusing on who? The minerals. Political aspect. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lot of ways why some people, how some people what? Get power. Mm -hmm. Get the, into areas of rulership. And they know how to play what? That game. Mm -hmm. So, is he playing that game? And obviously, he must know somewhat about it to be at the station that he is in life. He's not ignorant of it. He knows about it. So let's look and see and see if we can come to an, an, an opinion as to what he may be doing here. Is he genuine or is he using his political savvy? And he says, good teacher, what, what good thing will I do that I might inherit eternal life? Ah, oh, that's what he's missing. He's realizing that what? I don't care how much youth I got, I'm going to die. I don't care how much money I got, I'm going to uh, leave it. I don't care how much uh, 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 power I have, I'm going to have to relinquish that power. But maybe if I gain eternal life, I can keep all that. Let's see. Let's continue on. So what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, now look at what Jesus, his first answer to him. And what I love about the way Jesus answer, answers questions, he doesn't answer the questions the way we think the question should be answered. Mm -hmm. He goes to the root first. Mm -hmm. And the root that he's going to first is why do you call me good? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Are you trying to butter me up? Or, or are you trying to placate me? Or do you see something in me? And Jesus points out to them. Look what he says. He says, uh, Why do you ask me about uh, what is good? There is n no one who is good except only one, God alone. So what Jesus is saying you're running to me. You call me good. Let me explain something to you, young man. There's only one thing that's good, and that's God. Mm -hmm. So, are you calling me God? Because if you're calling me God, you're heading in the right direction. Mm. Now, are you calling me good for political gain? Or are you calling me good because you see me as God? Amen. Are you trying to butter me up? Or, are you, or do you recognize something real in me? Mm -hmm. Which one is it? Right? And so Jesus asks him, asks him that question. But then he goes on. But if you wish to enter into eternal life, he tells them what? Keep the commandment. What in the world is that? Did you just hear what he just said? Mm -hmm. He said, if you want eternal life, do what? Keep the commandments. What commandments? The ten. The Ten Commandments. The command, all the commandments of Moses, all the writings of the prophets, mm -hmm. all the commandments. You keep them all. Mm -hmm. Keep the commandments. And that that is true. That's that's one thing that why we know that Jesus is who he is, because he was able to fulfill and to, and to keep what? All, all the, the writings of Moses. That's right. All right. And so therefore he was able to purchase salvation but for us. Mm -hmm. Alright? So he's saying if you want to be right, keep the commandments. So he's also now giving us an indication of this ruler this ruler actually feels he has done a lot of good things and Jesus knows it 
But we can really know that for a fact when we watch the ruler's answer. Look at what the ruler says. And he said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you know the commandments. Now, the fact that the ruler said which ones brings out an aspect of, once again, his political aspect. Well, how do you actually see it? Which commandments are you supposed to keep? Because I believe I've kept some of them according to how I see it. But those other political groups, they see things a little different. So now he's trying to get Jesus to, uh, to explain to him, how do you view the commandments? Well, he says, which ones? And so, uh, and he says, but, and then Jesus says to, to, says to him, he says, uh, you know the commandments. You shall not uh, commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your mother, your father and your mother. And you uh, will love your neighbor as yourself. All right, so now Jesus gave him a list of commandments. This is not, this is not the full list. This is the, the short list, mm -hmm. the real short list. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and he answered and said to him, Teacher, this is the ruler answer, mm -hmm. I have kept all these things from my youth. What am I still lacking? Oh my goodness. So, right now, that, that aspect of him being humble don't, don't look like a, that might be something that he was bringing, right? Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, he's saying, I've done all that. I've kept that all. What am I still lacking? So, but wait a minute then. If you kept them all, why are you lacking? Mm -hmm. Because see, if you had kept them all, you wouldn't be lacking. You wouldn't be lacking. <laughs> all right. So obviously, he has not kept them all to the um, in, a, in a reality. But he th he's trying to justify himself. What about the ones that he left out, like? To not cover, to not cover, and to not put have another God. Well, that's why I say he only gave him the short list. Short list. I feel like the things that were left out would probably be the things that he would be struggling with, like mm -hmm. putting another God before, before God. Yeah. Because, like idling and. Well, I think Jesus got him on, on the the aspect of uh, loving your neighbor as yourself, because mm -hmm. that's something that people, um, once again, you need more definition on that. What does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. But then Jesus even pointed out, when you look at all of the, the ones that he did name, label, uh, when he says, uh, you know the commandments, do not commit murder. Well, he also said on a similar amount, if you hate your brother, yeah. that you also did what? Mm -hmm. you, you, you're as guilty as committing murder. murder. Then he goes and says, thou shalt not commit adultery. And then what did he say? If you look upon a woman mm -hmm. to desire after him, you've already committed mm -hmm. adultery, what? In your heart. <laughs> all right? Thou shalt, uh, you shall not steal. Well, if you're coveting, see, it's, 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 it's into that. If I could, if I could get away with it, I'd take it. I well, think. you're just as guilty then. Mm -hmm. Might as well take it. You know, it. Yeah. All right. Don't bear false witness. Well, who ain't twisted the story a little bit? Mm -hmm. Exaggerated it. Mm -hmm. Left something Jesus. out. Added something in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What color was it? It was red. You go tell somebody what color was it? Oh, it was bright red. Mm -hmm. Everybody said about no bright red. <laughs> And by the time the story gets finished, it was it was light. Oh boy! Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, Jesus picks up on this, and so but the man ends up with what? What lack I? And when Jesus heard these things, looking at him, he felt love for him. But but the scripture tells us that God so loved the what? World. The world. The world. Right. He felt love for him because he saw the guy. Trying to do all kinds of stuff. This guy reminds me of King Solomon. Mm -hmm. That did all he could do, but found out that it was all what vapor vanished. Mm -hmm. Just a you know. Yeah. And if you don't have the Lord, that everything re ends up just being smoke. Mm -hmm. And Jesus felt love for him, and said to him, "One thing you lack." And you know what? That's the same thing for us. There's only one thing we lack. We lack the ability to follow Jesus. If you don't follow Jesus, then you, 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 you don't have it. Everybody only lacks one thing. Can you follow Jesus? Do you believe him, trust him, and follow him? And so he's going to now point out to him that one thing that he lacks. Look what he says to him. If you wish to be complete, and Jesus can make you complete, mm -hmm. go and sell your possessions. In other words, 
put this world as secondary. Get rid of it. All right. Now, if he sold his possessions, he may be getting rid of his riches. He may even be getting rid of some of his his rulership, some of his power. He still have his what? His youth. He can still be young. Your youth connected to Jesus, how valuable is that? Right. But he didn't see it that way. Well, at least we'll, we'll see it. He said, go sell your possessions as much as you have and give to the who? To the poor. Now, somebody else will take this and say, see, this is what you're supposed to do. Take all you got and give it to the poor. And that's not what Jesus is pointing out here. Jesus is pointing out here to this individual that you have to remove the things that you trust in mm -hmm. and trust in me. You, you have to get rid of anything that you trust greater than the Lord and trust in the Lord. Whatever security it is. And a lot of times, for a lot of people, it is money. Uh, sometimes it's, 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 um, it's fame or, or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But in his case, Jesus points it out and gives him a direct uh, description as to what he need, prescription as to what he needs to do. He says, and give it to the poor, and you will have what? Treasure in heaven. Jesus said, trade your natural treasure for spiritual treasure. And take up your cross. In other words, you, yes, you will have difficulty because mm -hmm. you're not going to be that ruler anymore. People, when you say certain things, people are going to now what? Ignore you or challenge you. Mm -hmm. All right? And come follow me. You see, and that's the key. This is the one thing you lack. Forsake the world and follow me. Mm -hmm. right? That's basically what he is telling the man to do. And the man, uh, as we see here, is not going to be willing to do this. So he's going to have to die to himself, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is the, which is our cross to bear. It's our cross to bear. Yeah. Yeah. We die to ourselves, our own self-will. We agree with Jesus. We begin to, to acknowledge his way as our way. I'm trying to, because oftentimes, you know, a lot of people are trying to get to know Jesus, but they're trying to get to know Jesus so they can get what they want through what Jesus offers as power and authority. But you don't get Jesus to come and agree with you. You have to agree with Jesus. <clears throat> So we have to line up with him. He doesn't line up with us. Um, Jesus is not a genie in a lamp that we can just pray to and, and, and get our wishes done. Our wishes have to have to be renewed. We have to renew our mind so that our wishes begin to line up with the will of God. So which is why Jesus said when we pray, we pray, Our Father which art in heaven, die will be done by kingdom come on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Right. So that's what we want. We want God's will to be done on earth. But if it's going to be done on earth, let it also be done what? In me. Uh, but it says, but when the young man heard these words, uh, he face, his face fell in other words, his, what, his countenance dropped. Mm -hmm. And he became very sad. And he went away grieved. So he left. He came there seeking something and left without having it. Right? And was disappointed. It was sad. Because he wanted it based upon how he felt it should happen. And that's not how it's going to be. This was the same problem that most of the religious folks had during Jesus' day, they wanted the Messiah to come the way they envisioned him to come. Mm -hmm. Come conquering. Mm -hmm. But Jesus came as a uh, conqueror, not of the natural circumstance, but of the what? Spiritual. Mm -hmm. He came to take care of sin. Mm -hmm. But they wanted him to take care of you know, poverty and heartache and sickness. Mm -hmm. Though he did. He did help people that had sickness. He helped people that had uh, poverty because there were people that, that were begging alms and couldn't work, but then they got what? They got healed. Mm -hmm. Could now go out and, and, and earn a living for themselves. 
But his ultimate reality was that I came to take care of the cause of all of that is what? Sin. Sin. And that's what he was dealing with. Once again, he's going to the what? Root of the problem. He's not treating the, the symptoms. He's taking care of the root. All right. It says, and when and, and and he went away grieved, for he was very rich, one who owned much property. And Jesus saw him, that he was very sad. And looking around, he said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, how difficult it will be for a rich man who oh, for a rich man those who are wealthy to enter into the kingdom of God of heaven. It's what? Difficult. Difficult. Now, he's saying that people that have riches, their ability to get into the kingdom of, of heaven is going to be difficult. Now, later, in, in just a little bit here, he's going to explain why. But it lets us know that you, you wonder um, why when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by the devil, one of the things that the devil offered to, to, to Jesus was what? Property. Riches. Riches. He said, I'll give you all the all kingdoms the of the world. Of the world. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'll make you a, I'll let you be the ruler of the world. And he offered it to Jesus. And Jesus said, what? Get thee behind me, Satan. Right? Uh, but he said, um, you know, I'll give it to you, but you got to what? Bow down and what? And worship me. And so that prescription that has, that's written by the devil is still being written today. Mm -hmm. It's been written for, for, for years and years and years and years and it's going to continue to be written until... But some people take that prescription and go and fulfill it. Mm -hmm. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Jesus rejected it. Right? But a lot of people today take it, which is why when you take a prescription offered by the devil, you won't have ultimate healing. You won't have, it, it won't work. It'll work for a, a moment. You know? But it won't work for eternity. Amen. It won't work for a, uh, um, for your ultimate benefit. Amen. It'll ultimately work for your destruction. Alright? So Jesus lets us know that you, anybody that has riches will find it difficult. Now, if you left it like that, you'd be like, well, I guess the Bible tells you that it's saying that you shouldn't be rich. It's not what it's saying. No, because, it's let's keep reading. And he says, and his disciples were astonished. All right, so now, his disciples were what? Astonished. astonished. Because, once again, this is going against what they have been taught. What they believe. How they see things. Because they're seeing things in a limited natural vision and Jesus is trying to get them to see things spiritually All right? so then he expands upon it just a little bit it says that they were astonished at his words and Jesus again answered and said to them children and he uses the word children because he recognizes that I have to do what explain this to you you didn't get it how difficult it is to those who for those what trusting in, in riches. How difficult is it to those what trusting in riches? What are they doing? Trusting, trusting in it. Where should we put our trust? God. In Jesus. So if I'm trusting in Jesus, I'm good. But if I'm trusting in riches, I'm trusting in something that will not bring ultimate satisfaction. I'll be like the rich young ruler. Having stuff but not being satisfied. All right. And so therefore... Um, uh, you can have uh, uh, the nice things of this world and it'll never bring you satisfaction. You'll have a, a good job, never be happy. You'll have good health, never satisfied. Because that's bringing, your, you, that's bringing you your joy. But if you have Jesus, you're happy and you have joy regardless. Mm -hmm. Because the joy comes from within. Not from without. It's not a happenstance joy. It's an inner joy. Right? It's the difference between happiness and joy. Happiness, I'm happy because of what just what happened to me. But joy comes from the Lord. And that's what we should have. 
So a lot of times people, this world has trained us to seek after outer happiness or outer joy when the Lord Jesus is telling us to look for it, what, inwardly. Alright? So those that are trusting in riches, in riches, it's difficult for them to enter into the kingdom of God. And again, I say unto you, and look what he says, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Alright? Now, there was an old, an old saying that people used to have uh, that is not true. So I'm going to say this to the way they used to say it, but this is not what Jesus is talking about. They used to say that back in the day, these towns would be, would be um, cover, uh, surrounded by a gate. They would have the town, the little city, and there would be a gate around the, around the town. And the gate would be open for travelers and traders to come into the city. But then at night, they would close the gate and they would just have the, 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 the regular door, like a door like we have in our regular homes, they were called the pedestrian door. So the, the caravan folks that were carrying, you know, had camels and all that stuff, they would have to come through the day. But if they close the door at night, if, if you wanted to get it, they're not going to open that door at night because then the whole army could come in and they couldn't see then they would just open up the pedestrian door and let the people in. But if you wanted to get your camel in, then that means that your camel had to take all of its stuff off. And they would say, that's like taking all of its stuff off of the world. And the camel had to get down on its knees. And it's like, you got to humble yourself. And then you would just crawl through the door, the camel, and then you bring all the cargo in. And it says, you can get to the pedestrian door. And they would call that door the eye of the needle. And that's not true. <laughs> but that was a very popular story that went around through the Christian circles. Because, and the reason why it's not, it's not true, we're going to see here in just a minute. Because if that was true, that means that it would, it's, it's not impossible. It's just what? Hard. hard. So if you really work hard, you couldn't get through. Mm -hmm. Well, that means you can work hard enough to get your what? Salvation. Mm -hmm. But you don't, do we work for salvation? No. Salvation is a what? It's a, gift. it's a gift. It's given to us. So nobody works for their salvation. But if that old story that went through, and people need to look at it, because yeah, you just if you humble yourself and do all that, you can get you can you can get through, and that's 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 not true. And Jesus is going to point that out here in just a minute. Alright? Uh, but but the disciples understood it because when Jesus said it's easy for a, a, a the camera to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And when he, and when uh, the disciples heard this, they were even more astonished. So they weren't like just like, oh well, I guess it's hard. They were like astonished, like how can this be? And then look what they said. And said to him, then who can be saved? It's like, well, you know, who can? It's, they're looking at it as as an impossibility. Mm -hmm. Which is what Jesus is trying to point out. And looking on them, Jesus uh, said to them, with men it is what? Impossible. Impossible. So it's not difficult. It's what? Impossible. Impossible. Not with God, for all things are possible with men, are possible with God. So all things that are impossible with men... The things that are impossible with men are what? Possible with God. Okay. Okay. Alright. So, we are done. We thank God for, <laughs> for our lesson on today. I see the kids coming back and they got a lot of projects here. Alright.